Good evening. You are watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television, Firstly Headlines. More than half a million students head to schools in various governorates of the Sultanate with the beginning of the new academic year. The Creativity and Youth Initiatives Forum commences in the Wilaya of Musana'a to upgrade youth contributions to serve the society. Israel announces a land appropriation in the occupied West Bank, an anti-settlement group termed the biggest in 30 years. Those were the headlines. Now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Majesty King al Mu'tasim bin Lahi Abdul Halim Mu'azdim Shah of Malaysia on his country's National Day. His Majesty the Sultan has also sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President al mazbak Atambayev of Kyrgyzstan on his country's independence anniversary. His Majesty sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Anthony Homas Carmona of Trinidad and Tobago on his country's independence anniversary. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Andres Kiska of Slovakia on his country's national day. His Majesty the Sultan has also sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Islam Karabov of Uzbekistan on his country's independence anniversary. Five hundred twenty-nine thousand and four hundred and sixty-nine male and female students went this morning to their schools in various governorates of the Sultanate at the beginning of the new scholastic year 2014-2015. Some 12,578 male and female students started their first year in school. Schools organized various induction programs for the new students in the education process, including guided speech and gifts. The number of teachers reached around 56,000 males and females who seek through establishing partnerships with the community to build a good and loyal citizen. Coinciding with the start of the new school year, School Book Delivery Folder Initiative was launched that aimed to improve the quality of the delivered books and spread the idea among the members of the educational process. In order to standardize disposal, transferring, and relocation of records and national manuscripts and ensure the retention periods for longer time, the public prosecution approved the procedural mechanisms for special records management. The system enables administrative divisions in various government bodies to organize public records, make them accessible, and protect them. It concerns with preparing records retention lists and their classification to be the main pillar for building a modern system that registers, classifies, and encodes the records as per the determined classification system. With the participation of around 120 male and female youth from various bodies, establishments and sports clubs, a ceremony was held in the Wilaya of Musana for the inauguration of Youth Creativity and Innovation Forum. The event is being organized by the Ministry of Sports Affairs. The inauguration ceremony was presided over by His Excellency Dr. Abdullah bin Nasr al-Harrasi, Chairman of the Public Authority of Radio and Television, who called to find new interactive ways and approaches to be more able to reach youth. Discussion sessions and workshops on the role of government bodies in supporting innovation and youth initiatives and programs were the main topics in the gathering. Innovation initiatives exhibition was also held on the slide line of the forum. A workshop was held at Oman Chamber of Commerce and Industry branch in the Wilaya of Nizwa in the government of Adakhiliya, aiming to make entrepreneurs aware on the importance of Entrepreneurship Award adopted by the Public Authority for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Development. Discussions at the workshop touched upon supporting entrepreneurs resulting from decisions on developing small and medium enterprises forum held in Seha Shamikhat in Behla, and to upgrade and develop such enterprises to come up with a variety of economies based on knowledge and innovation. This gathering is vital to acquaint with the award competitiveness and the challenges facing owners of small and medium enterprises to reach the sought-after level. 
discussing matters of joint concern were at the focus of meeting of Brigadier Ibrahim bin Suleiman al-Rahili, acting commander of the Royal Army of Oman, when he received Major General Hassan Hamza al-Shahri, commander of Al Jazeera Shield Forces at Muasker al-Murtafa today. They also discussed a number of matters that would serve march of military cooperation among countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council. Air Vice Marshal Matar bin Ali Al Ubaidani, Commander of Royal Air Force of Oman, received in his office at Muasker Al Murtafa'a today Major General Hassan Hamza Al Shahri, Commander of Al Jazeera Shield Forces. They discussed matters of joint concern that would serve march of military work of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. من هنا تبدأ أسطر الحكاية تقاليدها راسخة كالجبال أصالتها مضرب مثل في كل مكان بساطتها ليس لها مثيل لا حدود لكرمها حاضرها مشرق متجدد مهرجان الصلالة السياحي 2014 من الثلاثين من يوليو إلى السادس من سبتمبر Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. Israel announced today a land appropriation in the occupied West Bank, an anti-settlement group termed the biggest in 30 years, and a Palestinian official said would cause only more friction after the Gaza war. Some 400 hectares in the Etzian settlement block near Beit Lahan were declared state land on the instructions of the political echelon by the military-run civil administration. The notice published by the military gave no reason for the decision. Nabil Abu Radayna, a spokesman for Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, called on Israel to cancel the appropriation. Iraqi security forces backed by militias today broke the two-month siege of Amirli by Islamic State militants and entered the northern town. The mayor of Amirli and army officers said troops backed by militias defeated fighters from the Islamic State to the east of the town. Fighting continued to the north of Amirli. The advance of the Iraqi forces comes after the U.S. military carried out airstrikes overnight on the IS militant positions near the town and airdropped humanitarian supplies to the trapped residents there. More aid was dropped from British, French, and Australian planes. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott said Australia will soon fly military equipment to the Iraqi city of Erbil to help Kurds fight Islamic State militants as part of a U.S.-led multinational mission. Australia also participated in a humanitarian airdrop to the besieged town of Amirli. Australia has agreed to join an airlift of military equipment uh, to the Kurds. Uh, we've agreed to join this airlift at the request of the Obama administration in the United States and uh, with the permission of the Iraqi government. Australia has participated in a humanitarian airdrop uh, to the besieged town of Amelie uh, in northern Iraq. Again, we've done so at the request of the Obama administration and with the permission of the Iraqi government. An Australian C-17 aircraft uh, will be involved in airlifting equipment and supplies to Erbil in the Kurdish part of Iraq. Uh, I can also say that we stand ready to participate in further humanitarian airdrops uh, in Iraq uh, should these be required. C-17 
Syrian Human Rights Watch announced that nine government soldiers were killed in a landmine in Jobar district in Governorate of Damascus. It also added that the Syrian army renewed its shelling of Jobar, which had witnessed fierce clashes between al Nusra militants and Syrian forces, coinciding with airstrikes targeted the district. Airstrikes also extended to areas in Yarmouk camp. Iran's possible response to new U.S. sanctions could not be pleasant, its foreign minister said today. Iranian leaders reacted with dismay to Friday's announcement that Washington was going to penalize a number of Iranian and other foreign companies, banks and airlines for violating sanctions against Tehran, most of which are tied to a decade-old dispute about its nuclear program. Washington said the moves were a signal that there would be no let-up of sanctions while international talks were underway to ease the economic measures in exchange for Iran's agreement to curb its nuclear activities. Today, Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif told a news conference that Iran would respond to the sanctions if deemed necessary, according to state news agency IRNA. At least two people are killed when Pakistan police fire rubber bullets and tear gas at protesters marching towards the official residence of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif while calling for him to resign. More than 500 people, including children and policemen, are injured as the protesters led by opposition politician. Two men brought to our hospital overnight have succumbed to the injuries this morning and more are in critical condition. Now for the general weather forecast. Cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the governance of the far and nearby mountains with chances of intermittent drizzle. Rest of the Sultanate will have clear to partly cloudy skies with chances of scattered rain over parts of the Hajar Mountains. Winds will be southerly to southwesterly light to moderate along the coast of the Arabian Sea while it will be southerly to southwesterly light to moderate over the rest of the Sultanate. Seas along the coastal areas of the Arabian Sea will be moderate with a maximum wave height of 2 meters. And along the rest of the coast, it will be slight to moderate with a maximum wave height of 1.5 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. More than half a million students head to schools in various governorates of the Sultanate with the beginning of the new academic year. The Creativity and Youth Initiatives Forum commences in the Wilaya of Musana to upgrade youth contributions to serve the society. And Israel announces a land appropriation in the occupied West Bank that an anti-settlement group termed the biggest in 30 years. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.